Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest talk. And this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, this is a topic we often bring up across a range of renal pathologies, the changes in the renal cortical medullary interface and what it means. I think one of the things you'll recognize, of course, is the renal cortical medullary interface is seen in normal kidneys, and the enhancement is such that when this changes whether it's tumor, whether it's infection, whether it's inflammatory, whether it's sepsis, whether it's infarction, whether it's radiation, or many other causes, anything that changes the renal cortical medullary interface is a sign for you there's pathology present, and then you need to work it out and figure out what exactly is going to go on. It's an important source of information on contrast enhanced scans of the kidney. And again, the fact that it has a range of possibilities make it a bit challenging at times because you need to look at all the information, both in the kidneys perhaps, outside the kidneys, looking at the renal vein, looking at the renal artery, but then at times looking at other organs because one of the things that can cause cortical medullary interface changes are tumors. I'll speak a little bit about clear cell and papillary and TCC but it can occur with metastasis, it can occur with lymphoma, but I'm just gonna use a couple examples and not go through all the various tumors. And then we're gonna to try to spend a lot of time on the non-neoplastic processes, see what information we could learn, see how we could do a good differential diagnosis, and really look at a spectrum of abnormalities with a lot of case studies. Now this article goes back more than 25 years but I like the article because this was in the early spiral days talking about how the cortical medullary interface looked, that there was a significant difference between the uh, arterial phase imaging uh, in the cortex and medulla, talking about how the uh, enhancement goes from about 30 to 40 Hounsfield units to 70 Hounsfield at about 30 seconds and about 150 or so at 50 seconds with the medulla enhancing minimally only to about 50 to 60 Hounsfield units at 40 seconds and 90 at 50 seconds. And so one of the things you recognize is the cortical medullary interface difference between cortex and medulla in the normal kidney roughly ranges between, let's say, 90 and 100 Hounsfield units, which is significant, and it's one of the reasons we can pick up pathology very nicely. When I normally give talks in the kidney, like for renal masses or other reasons, I'll talk about how the kidney looks different depending on the timing, and also the fact that our ability to pick up pathology, particularly tumors, will vary depending on the timing of the study. Some tumors are best seen in the early phase, the cortical medullary phase, which is also called arterial phase, particularly small vascular tumors, and some tumors are better seen in the later phase. Most tumors are seen across the phases, particularly when they're over one to two centimeters. It's also important to recognize that the enhancement of tumors allows us to be very specific with a very high accuracy what we're dealing with. So if a tumor measures under 90 Hounsfield units peak, I know it's gonna be a papillary renal cell, but if the mass measures 150 or greater, 90% plus is gonna be a clear cell. And in fact, if you use 100 Hounsfield units to separate a papillary versus clear cell, you'll be right in better than 90% of the cases. Now, typically, we talk about cortical medullary. The way we scan at Hopkins, it's about 30 to 35 seconds post start of injection. I like to inject four to five cc's for 100 to 120 cc's of contrast. And again, the cortex 150, medulla 50 to 60, so that 90 Hounsfield units is usually the number I quote, though the other article set up to 100, and 80 to 100 probably would be a good spread. I mentioned the reason I always like early phase imaging, you really get a good job at looking at arterial structures. Of course, you don't get a great job on the vein, though if you have AV shunting uh, from artery to vein, you will see the vein fill early, so it can be helpful there. It's excellent for preoperative planning for nephron sparing surgery, preoperative planning for renal donors, preoperative planning for partial nephrectomies, Tumor vascularity, again, helps me determine 
clear cell versus papillary or even TCC. But again, there is a lot of overlap in terms of non-neoplastic conditions uh, across infectious and inflammatory etiologies. And we'll speak about that. And I mentioned a moment ago about tumor detection, how sometimes tumors, particularly small vascular ones, one can argue one CM vascular lesion, many urologists will leave alone, but nevertheless, detection becomes very critical. And again, as I said, we'll speak a little bit now about tumor, but the main part of the talk will be not talking about tumors, will be infectious and inflammatory conditions. On the normal side of things, I always like to look at the kidney in a coronal view. I think coronal volume rendering a MIP are very valuable for looking at the vessels, looking for aneurysms, stenosis, or vasculitis, or such as FMD or other vasculitis, for example. Very nice interface, particularly on the volume rendering of the cortex and medulla. And so when you see a mass in the lower pole of the left kidney, and the mass is very vascular with AV shunting nicely seen, uh, you know that's going to be no way a papillary. That's going to be a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Or in this case, where I only have non-contrast scans, there's an infiltrating mass in the right kidney. Now, I know that's a tumor. I don't think, I'm not really thinking about infection. But could it be lymphoma? The answer is yes. Could it be a renal cell carcinoma? Yes. Could it be an infiltrating transitional cell? Less likely, but possible. When you give contrast, you see the AV shunting in the patient's right renal mass. You see the neovascularity. To me, I know in my mind I'm dealing with a clear cell renal cell carcinoma, which you can see very nicely here on the coronal view. Now, it's important to recognize when you compare the right kidney and left, the cortical medullary interface, even beyond the tumor, is still there, but it's not as intense as it is in the contralateral left kidney. So one of the things I talk about is even if you have a cortical medullary interface that's maintained, the fact that it's not bright enough, because it should be symmetric bilaterally, will tell you this underlying pathology present. And here's that same case, more toward the venous phase. There's renal vein involvement, there's infiltration of the patient's right kidney, there's distortion of the cortical medullary interface very nicely seen here and here compared to the normal contralateral left kidney. Another example, the cortical medullary interface right kidney looks normal. On the left, you kind of lose it, and there's something in the pelvis. So you know there's a tumor in all likelihood. And infiltration, yes, it could be a renal cell carcinoma, but relatively hypovascular, infiltrating, and you look harder, it's a transitional cell, and in this case, a little bit atypical because the transitional cell also involved the left renal vein and left renal artery. Kind of interesting. Again, the kidney is larger due to tumor infiltration. But again, across the spectrum of tumors, I'm not showing you lymphoma, I'm not showing metastasis, but any tumor can cause changes in the cortical medullary interface. And of course, at times there is some confusion when it's an incidental finding between tumor and inflammatory disease. And here's that same case nicely shown in the coronal view with the infiltration, decreased function in the upper pole of the left kidney, very nicely seen. The loss of the cortical medullary interface because of infiltration by tumor, nicely shown. And the infiltration of the calyx, upper pole, very nicely shown there. And again, you can see it on the uh, axial views. But again, my point being, we look at the axial, we look at the coronal, and we look at the sagittal, and often we'll do 3D imaging as well. All of those things are valuable in determining extent of tumor and for preoperative planning as well. Another example, when you look at this case, non-contrast, the left kidney is irregular. Now this could be to prior inflammatory disease. The patient could have mild hydro, which they have, and the patient passed the stone previously. But could this be infiltrating tumor? We give IV contrast, good cortical medullary differentiation on the right. There's that loss of cortical medullary differentiation in part on the left. It's also not as bright as on the right, and that would be considered uh, changes sufficient 
to determine that the patient had a tumor present. So again, this cortical medullary differentiation, an important source of information on contrast CT of the kidney, and again, the range of pathologies, okay? So I've talked a little bit about tumor. I won't go into that any further, but again, when a patient has hematuria, I look very carefully at the cortical medullary interface, and yes, I always, like all of us, worry about a tumor, but I also have to worry about inflammatory disease. But that cortical medullary change is a very good sign of pathology, but it's for us to work up the rest of the information to be very specific. Now, when you think about the kidneys, there are a number of things I wanted to talk about, and I will. And the order I put things in is more to talk about things in terms of a global perspective. So when you think about renal infarcts, renal inf infarcts can be due to a range of possibilities. We see them more commonly now because of patients with IV drug abuse, patients who were septic, patients with valve replacements. Typically, infarcts can be segmental or global. Segmental is more common, and the CT appearance will depend on whether the infarct is acute, subacute, or chronic. So for example, in this case, non-contrast patient with flank pain, you have two large kidneys and the right kidney looks lower density than the left, but they're not obstructed. I'm not really sure what's going on. You can see the kidneys look a bit large. When kidneys are large, there could be a number of reasons, tumor infiltration, acute renal failure, infection or inflammatory disease, or just some of the possibilities. But then you give the patient IV contrast and the only thing you see is a little bit of cortical enhancement because of the cortical arteries. The kidneys basically have a loss of cortex medulla. And that's why I chose to show this case first. Here's total loss of cortex medulla with just some rim enhancement of the kidney due to flow through capsular vessels. You see the renal arteries proximally, but this is total global infarction of the kidney. Just a really nice example. Okay, it's acute or relatively acute because in time the kidneys will become small and atrophic, but you just see some rim sign enhancement of the kidneys, but be it axial or coronal, the lack of perfusion is global infarction. Just a beautiful example. This can be due to sepsis most commonly. It can be due to extensive emboli. An unusual appearance, but one important to recognize. And these kidneys are not going to be coming back to function. Okay, just a real nice example. And here's just a bunch of images. And I show a lot of images at times because I really want you to look at the images. So when you see this on your own, you'll recognize it. So infarcted kidneys, beautiful example. Now, in that case was one of the more unusual ones. I don't have many global infarctions bilateral. Infarction of the kidney is not uncommon or hopefully is less common than it's been when patients have surgery. This patient had a resection of a neuroblastoma, had flank pain post-op, and you look at the right kidney, good cortical medullary interface. The left kidney, there's a lack of enhancement you can see it and that's an appearance of a global infarction here it is venous so it stands out a bit better again a little bit of capsular flow to the edge of the kidney but global infarction in a patient where the renal artery was injured at time of adrenalectomy it's a known complication and this patient's kidney will be removed because flow will not be coming back and here it's accentuated very nicely on the patient's cinematic rendering Another case, back pain and fever. You could think about polynephritis, but it's very wedge-shaped. You see the capsular sign. You see function in portions of the left kidney. And when you look through the images, the right kidney looks okay, good cortical medullary interface, but multiple infarcts in the patient's left kidney. A very nice example. You look carefully at the renal vein and make sure it's patent. Here it is on the coronal view the loss of cortex and the cortical medullary interface. Again, the biggest differential here might be acute pyelonephritis, but it has more of a look of infarct because of the way the uh, capsule vessel looks and the way the kidney interface looks as well. 
Here it is again, nicely shown sharp margination, a very nice renal infarct. And this was due to a patient with endocarditis. Another patient with back pain, very similar to the prior case, low density right kidney, yes, think about polynephritis. The patient had trauma, contusion may be though less likely. Again, this was a patient with a type A dissection. You can see the dissection in the aorta and the patient eventually died, but there's a renal infarct. Wedge-shaped, sharp margination. Again, this is a very nice example I'm showing you of an infarct. Pyelonephritis is never going to be that sharply marginated. Again, without a history, you look at the image on the uh, left, and if you ignore the aortic dissection, you could think about polynephritis. And here's the patient's dissection in the arch. So again, things that involve the aorta in the chest track downward and can involve the kidneys, as this example nicely shows. Here's another example with um, atrial thrombus and subsequent renal infarct. Again, right kidney, good cortical medullary interface. There's some cortical medullary interface in the lower pole of the left kidney, but most of the left kidney is infarcted. And again, just another nice example of near global infarction of the kidney. Another example here, sharp margins, beautiful example of a right renal infarct. You can see in this case, the patient's vessels are occluded, right? It's essentially a vasculitis with vessel occlusion and renal infarction. Very nicely shown as we go down toward the venous and getting closer toward excretory phase. And again, on the cinematic renderings, beautiful example of the infarction, the vessel irregularity, and the other findings of note. Now, another thing we can think about, of course, is renal failure, but let's do this. Um, we've done about 18 minutes on this talk. Let's take a five minute break and come back and we'll start right here. Be right back. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.